Hello, my name is Karen Dapolito, and we're going to talk about assessment and scoring of infants with NAS, summary of some important points. Our objectives are to discuss whether infants are born addicted to drugs, identify factors that can influence the development of NAS, identify the best screening methods, and describe the importance of accurately scoring infants for NAS. So we need to start out by looking at uh, what is NAS. And we know that NAS is a constellation of behavioral and physiologic signs caused by cessation of exposure to licit and illicit drugs. So the question we need to ask ourselves is, are infants born addicted to drugs? We know that people refer to these infants as drug-addicted infants. And we need to really be correct in how we address these babies because the answer is no. These babies are not born addicted to drugs. And if you look at the uh, definition of addiction, it is a chronic relapsing disease involving drug seeking and uncontrollable cravings seeking and uh, use of a substance such as drugs or alcohol. And we know that our babies are not a drug seeking these drugs and they don't have uncontrollable cravings. So we need to understand that babies are not addicted to drugs. They're not drug addicted babies. These babies are uh, passively exposed to drugs they've been exposed to in utero. Uh, some of the factors that influence development of NAS, certainly the presence of signs depends upon the type of exposure, what drugs the baby was exposed to, the timing of the maternal dose, the baby's metabolism of the drug, and certainly genetic predispositions. Premature infants we know have a lower risk of NAS because their central nervous system is more immature, especially babies less than 35 weeks. They have less fat stores and differences in total drug exposure. So as a result of this, we don't see the same severity of uh, drug withdrawal in premature infants as we see with uh, full-term babies. Screening, we're all familiar with screening. Just a few things I wanna mention about screening. 60 to 90% of methadone and buprenorphine exposed infants will develop NAS, and 60 to 80% of those infants will require pharmacologic management. Um, we do usually use a urine screening uh, to test for the presence of drugs, but we need to remember that urine screening for drugs in infants has up to a 60% false negative rate. So we wanna keep that in mind. Uh, many people are using meconium and umbilical cords now for testing. We know that they are a little bit more accurate, so you might wanna think twice about using urine screening uh, for the detection of drugs in babies who have been exposed to substances in utero. We need to look at the assessment of NAS. And the scoring tool that we typically use is the Finnegan Neonatal Abstinence Scoring Tool. Um, and we use this uh, pretty predominantly in most of our nurseries throughout the US. One thing that's very important when using the Finnegan Scoring Tool is to have established inter-observer reliability when doing the scoring. Um, the items on the scoring tool uh, used to assess infants for NAS should be defined. And two nurses should score the infant at the same time to assure scoring is accurate. In terms of the scoring, the inter-observer reliability scoring should be part of the care of the infant with NAS. Determine a specific time when the inter-observer reliability will be done. Consider at least doing this once per shift. And all infants should also receive non-pharmacologic treatment strategies as a part of their routine care. So in summary, uh, I'd like to say that infants are not born addicted to drugs. They are passively exposed. The occurrence of withdrawal signs is influenced by several factors, such as the baby's gestational age, the type of drug exposure, predisposition to withdrawal as a result of genetics, and the infant's metabolism. And that 60 to 80% of infants exposed to methadone and buprenorphine will have signs of withdrawal. The assessment for the presence of signs of NAS should be accurate, and accuracy is established by educating nurses to reliability in the use of the scoring tool, and the inter-observer reliability scoring should be completed between two nurses at a minimum of once per shift while the infants are in the hospital for their NAS. Uh, so I want to thank you so much for your attention and for watching this video.